good of you to feed me like this, Mr. Hobbs. I haven't eaten like this since I left my brother's house, and even then it weren't so good. Why did you leave your brother's? Because his wife came back, Mr. Hobbs. Oh. She was a witch, a real witch. I miss my brother, though. I'd be in touch if I knew how. Never mind that now. I got a treat for us this evening. Is it from SETI, Mr. Hobbs? It is, boy. I thought we'd open it up together. After all, it is addressed to us both. Is it, Mr. Hobbs? Well, see for yourself. Well, sure it is. There, Mr. Hobbs and Dick Tipton. That's what that says. My, my. Isn't that something? <laughs> Mr. Hobbs, hmm. do you think we might open it? Yeah. <laughs> Dear Mr. Hobbs and Dick, I want to tell you about my grandfather. He's the best Earl you ever knew, and it is a mistake about Earls being tyrants. He is not a tyrant at all, and if you knew him, you would be good friends, I am sure. Well, he may be sure, but I ain't. And the truth is, he is never happier than when he is doing good. Huh. Come on, you've got to see it. It's incredible. Hello, girls. I'm coming, Sadie. Heavens, two minutes won't make a difference. It'll make you so proud of Grandfather. Hello! Mrs. Errol, Lord Fauntleroy, good day. And by heaven, it is a good day. What's happening? Lord Doringcourt has ordered this whole section of the village renovated. Walls, roofs, windows, everything is to be repaired. Here, let me show you. Drains are being laid, a pump installed for every four houses. Hi there. Hello. What more could one ask for? Oh, allow me. Thank you. you see? I told you how good he is. <laughs> That looks like tough going. We should have tackled it sooner, but it didn't seem worth it till now. Oh, come on, woman. Stand up when you're talking to his lordship. What's your name? I guess you already know mine. Uh, Lizzie Baker, your lordship. I'm Bill Baker, and this is Amy. Well, I'm glad to know you all. Oh, not as glad as we are to know you, my lord. We've heard all about you. Oh, you have? We have, your lordship. From my sister, Lucy, as you've been kind to up at the castle and please your lordship. Oh, I know Lucy right enough. Well, that's grand. I'll tell her we've met. And I hope they're looking after you, Mr. Baker. They're looking after all of us, Your Lordship. Thanks to you. Oh, no, Mr. Baker. It wasn't my doing at all. It's my grandfather you have to thank. You're right. This is good. I am very glad to see it. You must be grateful to Lord Dorincourt, Mr. Morton, for yielding at last to your arguments, and yielding so wholeheartedly. It is Lord Fauntleroy that we have to thank for all this. We both know that. The Earl would indulge his every whim. I just give thanks to God, oh, and to you, madam, that his whims are generous. Nevertheless, it is Lord Dorincourt who must give the orders and spend the money. Remember that, Mr. Morton. Said he will not thank you for forgetting it. Cedric. Come and see what they're doing. Now, Grandfather, this is Mr. Waddle and Mr. Slack. They're digging the drains here that'll connect up with all the cottages. Oh, fancy that. This is my grandfather. He's come to see how you're all getting on. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, my lord. I hope uh, the work is not too taxing for you in this hot weather. Thank you. Not too bad, thank you, my lord. Oh, Cedric. My lord. Ah, Mordant. This must be a triumphant day for you. It is a great day for Dorincourt, my lord. Lord Fauntleroy insisted on it. He thinks it will improve the property. You may tell the tenants it was his idea. That may be so, Lord Dorincourt, but Lord Fauntleroy's mother has pointed out that we must not forget it's you that will pay the bills. Oh. You talked about the bills, did she? How kind. The Americans are especially gifted in that area. They talk of money a great deal. Oh, so I've been told. Uh, she was just here, my lord. Uh, she was admiring the work. Would you like me to see if I can find her? 
I wouldn't think of detaining her. Or you. Good day, Mr. Mordent. Come, Cedric. Robert, we'll walk. Visitor, my lord. Lady Constantia Loredale. I've shown her into the drawing room. Thank you, Thomas. Now we're for it. Who is she, Grandfather? Better get upstairs and get Dawson to tidy you up and then join us in the drawing room. But who is she? My sister. Well, Molyneux. Stand up. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Don't be ironic with me, Molyneux. I'm proof against your barbs. I stopped coming here because I could not endure the mistakes you were making with your sons. I have come again to try to prevent you bungling with your grandson. Your interest is very flattering, but pray don't trouble yourself. Cedric and I are managing very well. Are you? And what does the boy's mother have to say about that? Does she think you manage very well? I've not asked her. Well, don't you think you should? No, I don't. I take it, then, that this mad story that's running round the county, that you will not receive your son's widow, is true. It is. Really, Molyneux, you are ridiculous. What kind of position have you put the poor woman in? People will not visit her, as they will think her guilty of some transgression. You should be ashamed of yourself making needless scandal like this. Besides, her husband was a fine man, by far the best of your sons. What makes you think that he would marry someone unworthy? She is an American. Napoleon was a Corsican. The Princess of Wales is Danish. What on earth has that to do with anything? Ah. Come here, my dear. I am your grandfather's sister. That makes me your great aunt. I'm pleased to know you, ma'am. You may call me Aunt Constantia, if you like. I sure do, Aunt Constantia. Gee, only a little while ago, I thought there was just me and Dearest. But now, well, we've got family. Dearest? His mother. Your mother? I should so like to know her. Do you think I might call on her? Oh, that would be swell. You see, she doesn't know too many people here yet. And, well, I think she gets kind of lonely. Her being on her own and all, you know. I know. I am also on my own now, you see. Oh, gee, that's too bad. I am to return to Doran Court next week, and when I do, I shall pay her a visit. You may tell her I said so. I sure will. Begging your pardon, ma'am. I'm just going down to the village, and I was wondering, do you want anything? I don't think so. Thank you, Mary. I'll be walking through the village myself this afternoon, as Lord Fauntleroy wants to view the laying of the drains. <laughs> They're saying it's just the beginning, ma'am, that there's no end to the good he'll do. Oh, don't tempt fate, Mary. Let's just be thankful for the work that Lord Dorincourt's put in hand today. Lord Dorincourt, indeed, ma'am. Mary, Lord Dorincourt has never spoken ill of me to Cedric. I will not speak ill of him in return. Very well, ma'am. You know best. But his lordship's lucky to have you if he did but know it. And that's the truth. He's a fine boy, Molyneux. Thank you. What makes you think you can take the credit? <laughs> so you come to my little gathering. If you really want me. Well, I've asked you, haven't I? Then, yes, I'll come. I'm very touched. You will stay here? Heavens, so many treats at once. So, we are to be friends again. I should like nothing better, as long as you'll stop interfering. Oh, I won't promise that. And Molyneux, when I return, I mean to call on her. Thank you, Watson.
Yes? I want to see Mr. Havisham. Do you have an appointment? No. Then I'm afraid it's quite impossible. No, it isn't. It's quite possible. Now, you just tell him I'm here. Peace. They gave me a mount of them to do for luncheon. Oh. Do you want to come down to the lake? No, my lord. I doesn't. I've these to do, and then I have to wash and cut the cabbage, and it'll be time to start on the washing up. Oh, just for ten minutes. I've been practicing my ducks and drakes, and it's no fun at all if no one's there to see it. If I help you with these, will you come? Oh, I don't know, my lord. I shouldn't. Come on. Oh, all right. Only for ten minutes, mind. I shall fetch it for more melon if she sees me. But first I must finish these. <laughs> you can stare at me all you like. I'm not leaving until I've seen Havisham. You can tell him that. There's no need. Are you Havisham? I'm Mr. Havisham, yes. Might I ask who you are? You'll find out. I'm in search of Lord Fauntleroy. He's playing down by the lake, Your Lordship. Who's that he's playing with? One of the maids, my lord. One of the maids? There's no harm in it, my lord. They're only children when all is said and done. showed me how, and he said, whenever I get a good flat stone, I should pick it up and save it. Unless you think that's cheating. Far from it. I think it shows initiative. Good. Lucy. Oh. She's gone. Well, we must excuse her. I dare say she has a very busy schedule. I guess so. You hear that I'm giving a party tonight? Oh, I sure have. Old Mel. Uh... Mrs. Mellon's been in a real bait about it all week. But if I knew what a bait was, I could comment. I'd like you to attend. It's time you met some of my neighbors. They're curious about you. Me? But why? Well, because you're my heir. Because one day, you'll know them all. Besides, you're a novelty. And uh, in the country, any diversion is welcome. Oh, I think that's swell. If you can really be bothered. Oh, I can. Hodson, I'm leaving the office now. We will cancel the rest of my appointments for today. Make my apologies. I will cancel everything for tomorrow. I must go down to Doringcourt straight away. Send a message for my man to pack an overnight bag and meet me at Paddington. Very good, Mr. Havisham. I think the smaller jars are better for the old people on their own. Let's start with those. Right, Jar, madam. But I don't know how many plums we'll get into them. <laughs> now, how shall we do this? Where's the ladle? Oh, it's here, ma'am. But begging your pardon, I think we might do better with the jug as well. Quite right, Annie. Thank you. Here goes. I should do it. Here. It smells good. Mm. Lady Constantia Loridale, ma'am. Lady Constantia, good morning. I'm delighted to see you, my dear. Well, I'm delighted too. I'm a little surprised, I dare say. <laughs> You've not received much in the way of kindness from your husband's family, I think. Not that surprised. Said he told me you might call. And anyway, you were always my husband's favourite aunt, you know. Oh, it was quite mutual, I can assure you. Your little boy is 
very like his father. Yes. Now, if you will be kind enough to find me a spare apron, I think we should get back to work. Mary? Right. These are for the village. The small ones are for the old people on their own. The large ones are for the families. And this group is for ourselves. Very sensible, my dear. But may I make a suggestion? Yes. If we spoon the plugs directly into the jars, we may have some guarantee of even distribution. As it is, it looks as if some of the villagers will have to be content with little more than plum juice. Will you keep still? Now bend your arm. Haven't you finished yet? I'll tell you when I've finished. Will I have to wear this? And why shouldn't you? Because I look like a soppy girl. That's why. It's what Mrs. Mellon ordered from London, and that's good enough for you. When you're older, you can choose your own clothes, but until then, you'll wear what you're told and like it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming to this party, Dawson? Oh, the grand folk from roundabout, I suppose. They'll want to get a look at you. A bit like a monkey in the zoo. <clears throat> Nonsense. You'll have a fine time, you'll see. Dearest hasn't been asked. I should think she'd be too busy to come anyway. No, she wouldn't. She never does anything in the evenings. And nobody comes to see her apart from Mr. Mordant. Dawson, why does she have to sit down there all alone while Grandfather's just as lonely up here? I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, but what's the point of it? I don't know, my love. I just don't. But will they all come to the party tonight? My dear, most of them haven't seen the inside of Dorincourt Castle for ten years. They'll come. Sadie seems awfully young to have a party given for him. Molyneux wants to show him off, that's all. I don't think there's any harm in it. Oh, no, of course not. I gather you're not invited. Oh, no, certainly not. You know, if I thought it would do any good, I would have refused myself. But I don't want to quarrel with him again. I think I can do more by remaining friends. Oh, but you must go. I'm relying on you to make sure Sadie behaves. My dear, my brother is a stubborn, selfish, spoiled old man. But I can see that your Sadie has already wrought a change in him. I've no doubt that's why he and I are now on speaking terms. Then I'm glad. You know, he doesn't hate you half as much as he thinks he does. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ned. Cheers. Good help, dear. Lord Dorenbold. We must be away. We've quite a distance to travel. Oh, Lady, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it was worth the trouble. It certainly was. Your grandson is a fine boy. You must be very proud of him. Well, Lady Tudbury, you know, I rather think I am. Come here, Lord Fauntleroy, and tell me why you stare at me so. I was thinking how beautiful you are. <laughs> oh, Fauntleroy, make the most of this time. When you're older, you won't have the courage to say that. But don't you think she's beautiful? We're not allowed to say what we think about Miss Vivian Herbert. Well, Lord Fauntleroy is certainly allowed to say what he thinks. And as a reward, he shall come and sit next to me here. Some chocolates, please, Mr. Foxton. <laughs> Better go up and see, does she want anything before I turn in? She won't. She's no trouble, that one. No trouble? I say she's no trouble. She's an angel from heaven. Well, then why does his lordship punish her? Leaving her sitting alone night after night, pining for her boy? My mother said it must mean she's no better than she ought to be. She what? 
I don't think that, and I told her so. You did, right? Well, then why? I don't know, but I do know this. He'll be sorry one day for the grief he's given her. Or it's never said a cruel word in her life, and I hope I'm there to see it. My lord, Mr. Havisham is here. He wishes to speak to your lordship. Does he by drove? The devil does he want? Show him into the library. I'll see him there. Would you excuse me? Of course. My brother seems very intent on something. I gather Mr. Havisham has come down from London. Havisham the lawyer? Whatever for, I wonder. The Cedric seems to be enjoying himself. At any rate, he ate a great deal at dinner. And he doesn't seem to have stopped yet. I hope he doesn't have to pay for it in the morning. I'm sure his memories will offset any discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I guess we'll be leaving soon. Forgive me, my lord, but disagreeable as my news is, I really thought you ought to hear it tonight. Uh, bad news, eh? It is indeed, my lord. Very bad news. The worst news. I'm sorry to be the bearer of it. I had a visitor at my chambers today. She brought me a tale of your lordship's eldest son, the late Lord Fauntleroy. Darcy? I thought we'd heard the worst of that. More debts to pay? Worse than that, my lord. It seems that while Lord Fauntleroy was living in Paris some years ago, he contracted a marriage. Marriage? What marriage? To a Frenchman? To an American. An American he'd met in New York. Apparently, she followed him to Paris, and he married her. Oh, he would. To do now. Pay her off, I suppose. What does she want? Scandal? An income for life? Oh, Darcy, Darcy, Darcy! Forgive me, Lord Dorincourt. You have still not grasped the case. She has a child. A boy of 11 years old. But if she and Darcy have a son, then... Precisely. Her child, Darcy Errol, is now Lord Fauntleroy. It's a lie. It's a base lie. If it is a lie, it is painfully like the truth. According to her story, they married 12 years ago. They quarreled a year later, and she agreed to remain abroad when he came home. She's only lately fully understood her son's rights. Rights? Do you dare talk to me of rights? Have you seen proof? I've seen the marriage certificate. Used to believe any of this. It wasn't so entirely in keeping with my dear son Darcy. What is she like? She's handsome in a vulgar sort of way and loud. She can scarcely spell her own name. She's utterly uneducated and openly mercenary. I would say it is the money that interests her. You have spoken well of Cedric's mother from the start. And I refused to acknowledge her. I kept her away from her boy. Away from my house. And I cut her at every turn. And yet I suppose that she can spell her own name. I'm judged, Haversham. I'm paid out. I'm humbled. Molyneux, where on earth have you been? Everyone wanted to thank you and to say goodbye. Where is Cedric? Over there. Poor little lad. He's worn out. Well, have some. If anybody had told me that I could be fond of a child, I would not have believed them. 
I've always detested children. My own more than the rest. But I am fond of this one, and he is fond of me. I'm not popular. Never have been. But he is fond of me. He would have filled my place better than I have filled it. I know that. He would have honored the name. Thomas. Carry Lord Fauntleroy up to his room. checked for your marriage certificate. And? And it seems to be genuine. That's because it is genuine. We're continuing our investigations as regards your son. Now look here, Havisham. Lady Fauntleroy. Oh. So you grant me that. Now, what I want to know is when we should go down to Doring Court. I'll need a little money as I have some things to buy. But I guess I could be ready in a couple of days. How's the Earl fixed? Lady Fauntleroy. You must understand that all this has come as a great surprise to his lordship. I'm sure that in the fullness of time he will be glad to receive your son, but just now he's fond of his grandson, Cedric. And it might be difficult. Difficult fiddlesticks. I know all about little Cedric. I know about his mother, too. Waiting to see her own child when she has permission. Well, he may as well get it into his head that he ain't gonna treat me that way. If he tries, I'll make him the laughing stock of the county. Now, you just get on to his lordship, and you tell him we're coming to call. By the way, who gets to tell her? I will be writing to Mrs. Errol today. Boy, is she in for a shock when she opens her mail. Of course, we don't know yet quite what it'll mean, but at all events, I thought you should hear at once how things are. I don't want to force you to join us on our travels, if travels there must be. Go on with you, ma'am, as if I'd go anywhere else. I can't believe it. Why did it take so long for her to turn up? Are you sure there's no mistake? I'm afraid not. Mr. Havisham wouldn't have written unless he were quite sure. <laughs> well, I think it a terrible thing. I do, really. <laughs> oh, Mary. <laughs> I can't help feeling there are worse tragedies in life than not being an English peer. As for the fortune, Twelve months ago, we had no thoughts of it. We'll manage. You'll see. <laughs> Mr. Morden, ma'am. <laughs> what's up? What's happened? They've been and gone and broke my heart. That's what's happened. I am the heart of that old misery up at the castle, are they bound? Well... He caused enough pain in his time. It's his turn now. Well, this is a sad day. Oh, please, Mr. Mordant. Let's not be quite so downhearted as that. I mean, Cedric's prospects have changed, it's true, but he's still the grandson of an earl, and an earl who loves him. We're certainly a great deal better off than we were this time last year. Of course, you're right. Cedric will do well enough. No doubt his grandfather will get him into the army or the navy. Or the church. Uh, or the church. But it was not just a Cedric that I was thinking. It is of the villagers and the tenants. There have been great changes here. Lord Dorincourt has carried out improvements that have been left undone for 50 years. Is it likely that this Yankee brat will carry on his work? Or that the Earl will let him? I think you forget that Cedric's a Yankee too, Mr. Mordant. Or at any rate, I am. And as for this new child's influence on Lord Dorincourt, you'll just have to wait and see. <clears throat> I 
You sent for us, Your Lordship. Farnsworth, and you, Mrs. Mellon, I assume that you know my news. I dare say that it has kept the servants' hall entertained. Not entertained, my lord, but yes, we know what has happened. If we can be of some help in any way, my lord. It seems I am to have a visitor tomorrow. Lady Fauntleroy is arriving on the midday train. Very good, my lord. Will her ladyship be staying the night? I assume she'll be here for luncheon. I don't know, Mrs. Mellon. I simply don't know. I will make the necessary preparations, my lord. Will that be all? I think it better if, Lord, if Master Cedric goes down to Court Lodge in the morning. You can have luncheon with Mrs. Errol. Will you send down to tell her? You understand I wish the boy to be as little troubled as possible. Roberts can take Master Cedric down before he goes for the train. Good. I just don't want him to be unhappy. That's another letter you're writing. I never knew a boy like you for writing letters. To New York again, I suppose. I have to let them know I'm not a lord anymore. Mr. Hobbs will be pleased, I think. He doesn't take a kindly view of lords. He won't be so pleased. Not if what you've told me of him is true. Well, pleased or not, he ought to know. And Dick, too. Dawson, what's going to happen? I think I'm to go back to live with Dearest. But what happens then? Do we stay there? Or do we have to go away altogether? Bless you, child. I don't know. I shouldn't mind living in the village. But I should be sad if I have to leave Grandfather. I think he might miss me. And I should certainly miss him. And I'd miss you too, Dawson. I really would, you know. My name is Farnsworth. I'm the butler here. Oh, really? Come on, Darcy. Oh, uh, can I stay here, Mom? I'm tired. Oh, just get moving. Lady Fauntleroy has arrived, my lord. She's brought her son with her, and Mr. Farnsworth has shown them into the drawing room. Very well, Thomas. I'll join them directly. Well, here we are. Here you are, indeed. I don't want to, Mom. Who cares what you want? Now just get over here and stop sniveling. I guess you were wanting to meet your grandson. Oh, what should I call you? Lord Dorincourt will be quite sufficient, Lady Fauntleroy. Very well, Lord Dorincourt. May I present you the real Lord Fauntleroy? Lady Fauntleroy. You requested this interview, and on Mr. Haversham's advice, I have granted it. Perhaps, now that you're here, you will tell me what it is that you will come to say. Oh, it's gloves off, is it? Very well. You'll find I can talk straight. So, let's be quite clear. I have come to tell you that Darcy and I are coming to live with you. That is quite out of the question. People are always telling me that. We will take up residence here. During the season, I will live in Doringcourt House in Grosvenor Square. You will make me an allowance. And before I leave today, I will inspect my rooms. What on earth makes you think that I will agree to any of this? I'll tell you. If you refuse me, 
I will sell my story for worldwide publication. I will reveal everything I know about the Errol family, which it will not surprise you to hear is quite a lot. Your son, my husband, not being noted for his discretion when drunk. I will pose for photographs, and I will not rest while there is a single secret of the House of Dorincourt left unpublished. It may surprise you to know that there's an audience for these revelations about a great family, but I can assure you that there is. However, I'm sure there's no need for any of that. You'll find me most accommodating. I mean to be in London quite a bit once things are settled. Well, then you'll have a chance to get to know your grandson. What you say? Madam, I'm speechless. Well, maybe that's best until you've spoken to Havisham. Will you ring for the housekeeper? I'm feeling kind of hungry. And then after I've eaten, I'll take a look around. By the way, where's the other boy? In the village with his mother. Oh, yeah. I heard about her. What a sad. Well, there'll be no hiding me away in the village. You can be sure of that. I guess she spoiled you, huh? Yes. I suppose she has. Ah, uh, Thomas. Tell Mrs. Mellon that Lady Fauntleroy is ready for her luncheon. Sadie, what are you going to do with yourself this afternoon? I don't know. I guess maybe I'll go up to the castle. I wonder if she's still there. She? And who's she? The cat's mother? No. <laughs> you know, my uncle's wife, the mother of the new guy. So, what are you doing? What is it look like? Can I help? We've just about finished, but do ask again whenever you want to. I guess I will be able to help a bit more. You know when I'll be here all the time. And we'll be glad of it, won't we, Mary? It'll be nice having a man round the house. Well, I think I'll get going, if that's all right. Of course it is, as long as your mother doesn't mind. Go and say goodbye to her now. OK. See you both tomorrow. I don't know which I'm sorry is that that he had to live up at the castle away from his ma, or that he has to come back here now. Life can be wicked sometimes. When was it last done up? It was decorated for the late Countess on her marriage to his lordship. Yeah? Smells as if she died here. Well, we'll all have to go. I'll get someone down from London for ideas. As you wish. When is your ladyship expecting to take up residence? Oh, not for a couple of weeks. I'll let you know. But don't worry, you don't have to have it finished by then. Just clean it up a little. Now, show me the nursery. Come on, Darcy. I expect the curious downstairs. My lady? Now that you've met the real Lord Fauntleroy. This way, my lady. should he be? It's all his now. Beg pardon, my lady, but these things belong to Master Cedric. Really? Well, Master Cedric will have to clear them out, won't he? This is going to be my son's room. Isn't it precious? Master Cedric, you're back sooner than I thought. I told Robert I didn't to... wait for Robert. I walked. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, this is your aunt, Lady Fauntleroy, and your cousin. Lord Fauntleroy. Cousin Darcy, I hope we'll be friends. I don't know there'll be much chance of that. You're not planning to stick around, are you? I don't think things are quite decided just yet. Well, I better get decided, and quick. Is this yours? Yes. Can I have it? I suppose so. Thanks. Well, that about does it. We'd better be going. I'll let you know my orders, Mrs. Mallon. Come along, Darcy.
Did you see them? The new ones? I did. They came into the nursery. What a pair. His lordship's well cut up. Do you know, Mrs. Dawson, I felt sorry for him. I did, truly. And I never thought I'd say that. They'll be coming here to live, then. Well, that's what they're saying downstairs. Though it beats me how Mrs. Errol, who never said a cross word, was left a stew in the village. And this one's been given the old countess's rooms. I don't know. How old's the boy? Do you know? Eleven, I think she said. So what happens to our lad now? Blessed if I know. Poor kid. Lucy, you should do that in water. They wouldn't make you cry then. It's not the onions that's making me cry. Oh. Don't be so soft. Master Cedric will be all right. I wish I was the grandchild of an earl and off to live in Court Lodge. Yeah, take it. Now, you better get on with these, or you'll have other troubles to worry about. Well, Shady, how do you feel about it all? I feel pretty odd to tell you the truth, Grandfather. Will they take Dearest's house away from her? Nope. They can take nothing away from her. Can't they? No, my boy. Not yet, at any rate. Still, I guess it means that everything's going to be different from now on. I'm afraid some things will have to be a bit different. Yes. I just wish it could all have stayed as it was. So do I, Sadie. Oh, so do I. I suppose this... Darcy, he will have to be your boy now, as I've been, won't he? No, he will not. Won't he? Oh. Then shall I be your boy, just like before? My boy? Yes. You'll be my boy as long as I live. Don't you worry about that. Oh, well then. I don't care about the Earl part, really. But I thought we weren't going to be such friends anymore. Don't you worry, Sally. I'll look after you. I promise you that. I'll give you everything I can. I'll be leaving here, won't I? Well, leaving the castle. That lady said my room isn't my room anymore. Did she, my God? Are you all right, sir? Is it your foot? Would you like to lean on me? No, 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 it's not too bad. But anyway, I'm afraid I must get used to managing without you. Don't say that, sir. It's just, if she, if they're going to live here, I think I'd rather be with Dearest. If it's all the same to you, I'm sure they're nice and everything, but I think I'd be better off in the village. And I know Dearest feels the same. I expect you will be steady. Yes, I expect you will be. Dick! Dick! Is she hot? You've got to speak to you, Dick. Right away. You're done, mister. Yeah, boy. They've gone and done it, just like I said they would. Sorry, mister. I'm busy. I don't know. You better sit here, Mr. Hobbs. That way you won't get no interruptions. Now, who's done what? Listen to this. Dear Mr. Hobbs and Dick, I cannot write a long letter this time, but I just wanted to let you know that it's all a mistake. I am not a lord anymore, and I shall not have to be an earl. What? Wait a minute, there's more. There is a lady which was married to my Uncle Darcy. And her son is now Lord Fauntleroy, not me. I am not rich now. As when your papa is a youngest son, he is not rich. So I'll have to work. My grandfather is pretty angry at everything. But there it is. I thought you'd be interested and glad that I ain't an aristocrat. 
Your old friend, Cedric Errol. Not Lord Fauntleroy. Poor old Ceddie. They're trying to rob him. That's what they're doing. They're trying to rob him because he's an American. They've had their spite against us since the revolution. Now they're trying to take it out on him. So you're not glad that he won't be a lord? I am not. I don't like him. But if people have to be lords, I reckon our city's as good as anyone. Mom. You have a visitor, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It's Lord Dorincourt himself, ma'am. He's in the drawing room. Thank you, Mary. People say so. Do you know why I've come? Yes, Mr. Havisham's written to me. I shall defend your son with all the power of the law. He must have nothing that is not his by right, even if the law can give it to him. That outrageous woman and her child. Perhaps she cares for him as I do Cedric. And if she was your eldest son's wife, then her boy is Lord Fauntleroy and mine is not. I suppose you would prefer that Cedric should not be the Earl of Dorincourt. How foolish you must think me. It is a magnificent thing to be the Earl of Dorincourt. I know that. But I care most that he should be what his father was, brave and just and true. In striking contrast to his grandfather, eh? I haven't had the pleasure of knowing his grandfather. But I know that my little boy believes it. I know that said he loves you. I have been a great fool, madam. And now I am miserable and wretched. And it is because of my misery and wretchedness that I come to you. The truth is, you are like the boy. And he cares for you. And I care for him. Treat me as well as you can, for his sake. I wish you would sit down. He's to move down to the village tomorrow. I heard Mrs. Mellon telling Mrs. Dawson to pack his things. There's no harm in that. He should never have been taken from her, poor little mite. Well, we won't have it so easy with the new one. Did you see him? Oh, I did, a right little devil. Still rather him than his mother. Who's gonna meet her? Fain Zoe. <laughs> Look, everyone, look at this. Well, I never. Silly cow. I think she looks quite smart. Oh. What's all this? I'll take it. Well, you're going to waste the whole evening on this rubbish? She'll catch you, won't she? Oh, I don't care if she does. Keep still. <laughs> <laughs> Dawson? Yes? It's strange how things work out, isn't it? Tonight, I'm looking at Dearest Candle. And tomorrow, I'll be down there. And maybe I'll be looking up at the castle. You'll be glad to be back with your mother. And she'll be glad to have you. That's certain. I know. But it's still strange, isn't it? Well, life is strange. Come along. Into bed. You know, Dawson, I've been very happy here. With Grandfather and all of you. Happier than I thought it would be when I first came here. And we've been very happy to have you. You can be sure of that. And you tell your mother I said so. Oh, good night. Sweet dreams. I 
beg your pardon, my lord, but they were reading this downstairs and I thought you might care to see it. There's an article in it about Lady Fauntleroy. Well, there's no harm in it. A fashion piece, really. But I thought you ought to see it. A servant's whole paper. I trust I can spare it. Thank you, Mrs. Mellon. Is there something else, Mrs. Mellon? Only... Only that we're very sorry below stairs that Master Cedric is leaving us. That's all, my lord. Thank you, Mrs. Mellon. Thank you. You've been very kind. Master Cedric has made us all kind, my lord. That's what Dawson says. And I think she's right. Wait a minute. Why, it's, it's poor little Sadie. What? Oh, never mind, never mind. I just got to show that to a friend of mine. Oh. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, you can pay me next week. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, all thank right, you for Mr. coming Dobbs, in. But I. Bye now. Goodbye. Dick, Dick, come here. They're gone and gone. No doubt about it. Get in here, boy. What is it? Look at that. In print. They've robbed our boy, and now they're going to send him packing. I think it's a shame, Mr. Hobbs. I do, truly. Do you want to see it? Ain't no point in that, Mr. Hobbs. You just tell me what it says. There's a picture of Seti, if you want to look at that. Wait a minute, Mr. Hobbs. Wait a minute. Is that all you take it? It's all I need. Honest, Mr. Hobbs. That's it, son. You better get going. He'll wait for us. I'm sure of it, Mr. Hobbs. Hey! Well, well. We won't see this street again till everything's settled one way or the other. That's right, Mr. Hobbs. How far are you going, mister? All the way to South Street Pier. I quite agree, my lord. But I see no way round it. You know what she intends to do if you refuse. Surely, if she makes a scandal, it will harm her own son in the long run. She doesn't care a scrap about the boy. She means to enter society as your accepted daughter-in-law. You'll see in this. I have, my lord. So, I am to spend the rest of my life Reading about her underwear and her household hints at breakfast. With respect, that will be better than reading about the life she shared with the late Lord Fauntleroy. Will nothing else satisfy her? Nothing. <clears throat> but to leave completely, where's the good in that? Where will you go? Who will you know? Mr. Morton, whom do I know here? Apart from you, I'm as much a stranger to the county as I was when I arrived. No one will miss me. The village will. Well, and I shall miss the village. There you are, then. Well, what about Lord Dorincourt? Does he want you to go? I don't expect so, no. But he won't oppose my wishes, I'm sure of that. He will know that I must do what is best for Cedric. And why will it be best for Cedric to leave the grandfather he loves? Oh, come now. Cedric's been received as the heir, as the future Lord Dorincourt. Would you wish him to play second fiddle to his cousin? To be pointed at as an object of curiosity? No. Far better for us to make a new life somewhere else, where said he's never been anything but plain Master Cedric Errol. They say Lady Fauntleroy is to live at the castle. Yes, she seems to have driven a harder bargain than I did. Will you call on her? I don't think so. You don't care for playing second fiddle either. <laughs> where will you go? To Lady Constantia Lauradale's at first. She's offered us a home for as long as we need one, and it would give us time to plan. Well, 
I shall miss you, Mrs. Errol. I'm glad to hear it, Mr. Mordent. Can she be delayed? Not for long, and frankly, I don't see the point. The marriage certificate is genuine. I've had it checked by experts. What good is there in antagonizing her further? Whether we like it or not, her son is now your heir. Cedric has gone. He's at Court Lodge with his mother. I know, my lord. I would have liked him to have stayed, but... In truth, if the household is to be under the control of Lady Fauntleroy, I think Cedric's better off with his mother. You're right, of course, Havisham. Just as you've always been right about Mrs. Errol, and I have been wrong. I dare say there is some satisfaction in hearing me declare myself wrong. It has not, I think, been my usual practice in the past. There is no satisfaction in it, my lord. None at all. He's still here, then? He is, and making me later every minute. I have to go into the village for some things. You couldn't go down and get Peter to take over here, could you? Never mind that. You run along. I'll give him his coat. What if Mr. Farnsworth sees? You let me worry about him. Off you go. I've got your coat, sir. Good. Thank you. I wonder if you have a minute, sir. A minute, yes. I haven't very long before my train. up here. Oh, there you are. What are you doing here? Come down now, Master Cedric. I have a letter for you. It came this morning from New York. It's from Mr. Holmes. <laughs> what does he say? Dear Seti, yours received. The news seems bad. I write to say two things. The first is that Dick and I are looking into it, and the second is that if them earls are too many for us, then there is a partnership and a grocery business ready for you when you need it. Yours, Silas Hobbs. Well, that's fine of Mr. Hobbs, I must say. It is. Only, what does he mean, they're looking into it? Never you mind, Master Cedric. There's plenty of people looking into it. We'll know soon enough if there's anything to find. Line. I wonder how much this lot costs. Perhaps you might help to carry Thomas instead of pondering things that do not concern you. Yes, ma'am. Fiddling, you little brat. They are taking your things upstairs now, Your Ladyship. Am I right that you've travelled without a maid? Yeah. Pretty shocking, huh? I was only going to say that I have appointed Sarah as your personal maid for the time being. She will carry out whatever instructions you choose to give her. Now, would you like some tea brought to you here? Or perhaps you'd like to go straight to your rooms? Where is my father-in-law? In the library, my lady. Does he know I'm here? I believe so, my lady. There are going to be some changes around here, Mrs. Mullen. This room for a start. What is it? The city morgue? We're going to have a little zip, Mrs. Mullen. We're going to have a little life. As you wish, my lady. That's right. From now on, everything's going to be just as I wish. And right now, I wish to have my tea in the library. You stay there, Darcy. I beg pardon, my lady, but I'm not sure that his lordship wishes to be disturbed. Oh. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? Because he's going to be. I told him to bring my tea in here. Oh? Yeah. I figured you and I should have a little talk. I don't know that we have much to talk about. Now look, Lord Darncourt. All that laddie da stuff may keep the peasants trembling, but it doesn't mean a hill of beans to me. I'm not impressed. So if you'll just dismount from your high horse, we can talk a little business. Just put it down here and get out. We're busy. 
Very good, my lady. Thank you so much, Thomas. And what is the business that we are to have the pleasure of discussing? Well, you just can't turn it off, can you? Oh, well, I don't care. We're here now, and we're staying. The point is this. I don't have to get in your way as long as you don't get in mine. Really? Really. It's a big place you got here. Could do with a little fixing. There's plenty of room for both of us. I mean to be in London quite a bit anyway. As you please, madam. But first, you have to do something for me. You're going to give a party for the county to meet me. I'm an old man. My party giving days are over. Yeah? Well, that's just where you're wrong. Now, don't you kid me. I know you give a party for that other little brat. So, give one for Darcy. Only this time, there'll be no hiding the heir's mother away. Nobody's going to think there's any scandal attached to me. How could they? Oh, yes. Ha, ha. Your wonderful British humor. You left Cedric's mother living like a hermit. I know. They tell me she wasn't even allowed inside the gates of the park. I don't know why she put up with it. Nor do I. Well, believe me, I won't. So let's get that straight. Now, one lump or two? This must be it. Can I help you? Is this right for Mr. Havisham, the attorney? Mr. Havisham is a solicitor, yes. Well, we want to see him. Right away. You tell him? I assume you have no appointment. You assume right. I do not know how business is conducted in the United States. Judging by the Americans we have dealt with here recently, it seems to be in a most haphazard manner. Now, if you will give me your name and address, I will see if Mr. Havisham has a spare appointment in the next week or two. You don't seem to be hearing too good. We want to see Havisham, and we want to see him now. I'll just see if he's busy. Uh, these gentlemen were just wondering if you could spare them a moment, Mr. Havisham. Why, well, it's Mr. Hobbs, isn't it? It is, sir. I'll see you there, Lawson. It'd be mighty helpful if we could just talk for a while. Yes, of course. Come in, all of you. I thank you for your trouble, sir. The others have moved in now, haven't they, Grandfather? I guess there'll be company for you. No, they won't. Won't they? Thera said you were giving a big party for them tonight. So I am. I'm sure we're coming. Thera thought it might be difficult for you if we came. It'll be difficult for me, whatever happens. But I dare say she's right. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I had a letter from Mr. Hobbs. Did you? Yes. He offered me a partnership in his grocery store. That was very really handsome of him. I guess you've changed your mind about Mr. Hobbs, haven't you, Grandfather? Him being a grocer and everything. I've changed my mind about a lot of things. Oh. Do you want to go back to New York? I wish we didn't have to go anywhere. So do I. I'll still think of you, Grandfather. All the time. And I of you. You can be sure of it, since you know how much I thought of my mother when we were apart. I expect you're glad of that now. Yes, yeah, Cedric. Now I'm glad of it. Good evening, Lady Mansell. Good evening, Lord Lady Mansell. Good evening, Reverend. Hang on a minute. Where do you think you're going? Telegram from Mrs. Mellon. Urgent. We'll get it in round the back then and be quick about it. Like that, stupid. I said a ringlet. Looks like a noose. Do it again. Very good, my lady. Oh, unfortunately, it's not very good. It's very bad. Now curl it some more. Only better. 
Mr. Richard and Lady Mary Swarrington. Swarrington? Lady Mary? Reverend Mr. Mordens. Hello, Mordens. Lord and Lady Northbrook and Miss Arabella Bear. Lady Constantia. Here we are again, Mr. Here Mordens. Less happy than the last time, I'm afraid. Have you met her yet? I gather she's very different from Mrs. Errol. I've seen her, and yes, she is very different. Cedric and his mother are to come to me at Lauradale Hall, for a while at least. So I gather. They will be sorely missed here. I'm sure. The good they've done in so short a time, you can't know how much they've achieved. Oh, I think I can. Everything all right, Sarah? Honestly, Mrs. Mellon, I know it's not my place to complain, but look at this lot. All I'm worn, all needing re -ironing. Oh, and what I've had to put up with when I was doing her hair. I swear a saint would have thrown them tongs out of the window if there'd been one more word. You're quite right, Sarah. It is not your place to complain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I will inform her ladyship that the guests have all arrived. Mrs. There's a telegram for you, Mum. The boy said it was urgent, or he'd not be up in this part of the castle. Never mind that now. Lucy, run to the stables and find Mr. Roberts. Tell him he's to meet the next London train. And hurry, girl, there isn't a moment to lose. Well, Sarah? <laughs> Fontleroy and her son, Lord Fontleroy. Oh, yes, I do see. Oh, dear. Tyrants built it and peasants paid for it. Don't you forget that, boy. I won't, Mr. Hobbs. But still. Yeah, yes, I. I know it's um, it's some pile. You three come with me. Roberts, wait here. Someone will be out in a minute. You're to do as they tell you. Yes, sir. Not so loud. Mr. Havisham, you here again? Are you always the spectre at the feast? What is it now? No more bad news, I hope. No, indeed, Lady Constantia. In fact, I need some help. Well, out with it. What do you want? Can you get Lord Doringcourt, Lady Fauntleroy, and her son into the library? What, now? Yes, now. I suppose so. And you, Mr. Morton, you'll find a carriage waiting at the front of the castle. Go to the village and fetch Cedric and his mother. If they won't want to come. It's late. The boy will be in bed. They must come. As soon as you get here, come straight to the library and be quick. Heavens, how exciting you make it sound. Leave it to me. Court Lodge, as fast as you can. Right. 
Well, what do you think? She defies belief. Cedric and his mother, have you seen them since all this came to light? They're not here tonight, are they? No, but this time that was her choice, not mine. I'm glad to hear it. Molyneux, I wonder if I might have a word with you alone. What about? I thought perhaps we might go to the library for a moment. You're being very mysterious. I'll join you there directly. Stancho, what are you playing at? Off you go. Hmm. My dear, I wonder if I may introduce myself. I am your late husband's aunt. Yeah? Glad to know you. So anyway, you've seen I'm next so to me, sorry I... to be a nuisance, my dear. But there are one or two things I particularly wish to discuss with you tonight. I was hoping we could snatch a moment alone. Oh, looks like you got your wish. So what do you want to say to me? Oh, not here, my dear. I can hardly hear myself think. Come to the library for a minute. Well, I don't believe it's quite polite to leave our guests. Oh, just for a moment. They won't notice we're gone. Oh, very well. But only for a minute. And of course, we must have your darling boy. Amazon, what's happening? What are you doing here? If you'll just bear with me for a minute more, my lord. Does Lady Constantia know you're here? She does. I might have known it. Meddlesome old biddy. What is this? What's going on? We really must hurry. I cannot see why. What does it all mean? Here he is, madam. What is it? What's happening? Never mind that now. Come on! Come on, Havisham. I hate a mystery. What's all this about? This is what it's about, my lord. <gasps> Hello, Minna. It can't be. How have you been? Hello, Tom. Hey, Pop. Shut up, you little fool. Avisham, I don't understand. It's quite simple. This man is Ben Tipton, brother of Dick Tipton, an old friend of Cedric's. And this is his son, Tom. When Dick saw the pictures of Lady Fauntleroy and her son in an American newspaper, he got in touch with his brother. That's right, Your Honor. But if the Tipton's all married, when did she leave him? When she met Lord Fauntleroy, 12 years ago. But then, how does the boy know him? Because she left Tom behind with his father. Then suddenly, last year, she turned up out of the blue. She'd come to collect the child. Presumably, she'd learned what prizes were at stake. I didn't want to let her take him, Your Honor. We'd been happy, Tom, me, my brother Dick, until she showed up again, but I didn't know what to do. When did you start to suspect her? It was Dawson, my lord, who gave me the first clue when she told me the boy must be more than 11 years old. That meant he couldn't be your grandson, not legitimately, anyway. Well, good for Dawson. It's a lie. You've hated me right from the start, haven't you? And now you've come here to smear me and take away what's mine. Come off it, Minna. The game's up. Don't make this worse than it has to be. Am I coming home with you now, Pop? You sure are, boy. And this time, you're gonna stay home. Do I take it, then, that this boy is not my grandchild? He is not. But, Havisham, I presume this person is still my daughter-in-law? That, I'm afraid, is true, my lord. The boy is not your heir, but she is still Lady Fauntleroy. No, she ain't. Not unless you get a divorce without telling me. She's still Mrs. Ben Tipton, that's who. Oh, you crazy. Don't you see what you've done? You fool! Get out of my way! Dick! Mr. Hobbs! What are you doing here? Good to see you, boy. Said he. Oh, Ceddie. The great nuisance, I'm afraid, Mary, but there we are. It'll all just have to be unpacked again. Sure, it's no nuisance at all, ma'am. I'm gladder to unpack than I was to pack. <laughs> well, that's true, I suppose. Oh, Dorincourt, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry for the mess, Lord Dorincourt. If you'll just give me a day or two, I'll have it straight again. I suppose that is absolutely necessary. Lord Dorincourt? I was thinking that you might be persuaded to leave your possession in their crates. My dear, I have a 
a delicate errand to fulfil. The fact is, Sadie and I have been talking, and we wondered whether you would do us the favour, no, the honour, of coming to live with us up at the castle. We're a, a difficult pair, I dare say, but we feel that we would go on a great deal better if you were there with us. Yeah. 